Hello folks, fellow YouTubers and friends. I thought I'd make a short video to let you know uh, what we're trying to do to the Verg and Foley at Escapement. Uh, I'm looking in the viewfinder and it seems to be a little bit dark. I don't know how it's going to turn out. But I've got a little light here that I'm going to try to show different things. Now on the uh, one of the videos I said we had a lot of wasted energy in the Verg and Foley Escapement that we built before because we built it rather crude. And what I'm trying to do is get rid of that wasted energy. Now to just to, to show you what I'm talking about, when this thing comes up, uh, we've got it upside down. So when I'm raising up on a pendulum, then it's falling. At this point right here, you see I have no waist. It's not moving. If I put it down here, then it's moving. So at this point right here, it's driving, pushes the and Did you hear that? That little bitty click. Now over here, it touches. Now if the pendulum continues growing up like so, then this rides that curve. I don't know if you can see the curve exactly, but it's a curve and it's exactly the same radius as from the pivot point right here. Therefore, as the pressure is being applied in this direction, it does not move. It simply rides that curve until it comes around at this point right here and pushes until it clicks like so. Now, over here at this point, it's moving, but if it comes up, it's, it's hitting. That's all the slack we have. Before, we had three-eighths of an inch every time, which the actual, uh, this point right here is, is uh, well, let me get it back, right, right here, is ten times every time this wheel goes around once. So three-eighths of an inch times ten is a lot of wasted motion. Well, Hopefully we've uh, reduced that considerably. Let me take this back around over here. A little pressure on the wheel comes back. Bam. Like so. No wasted motion. Or rather very little. Let's put it that way. Like I said, I'm not a machinist. I don't have machine tools. And if I did, I wouldn't know how to use them. I wish I could build it closer. But right now we've got it so close it's pathetic. This, I hope you can see that again. This arc right here is to the point that when this comes up like so it rides that arc I'm putting pressure back on it and it rides that arc and does not move that is as perfect as I can get on that arc and there it goes but that's not wrong direction because this way comes over here hits like so if you'll watch that right there let me see if I can take it up and hold the light and get pressure on it so it goes through now all of a sudden it's pushing on that side over there pushing right here push 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 click just like so okay all right i just thought i'd make this short video let you folks know what i'm doing now this one's hanging up a little bit now i've made these are one eighth inch steel what i have to do is a little more finesse and just tweak this out just a little bit. Now I've made it with all thread rod so we could move these in and out. That's one adjustment. We made it so that we could adjust it, the plate, the plate itself this way to get it centered. Now center this way doesn't mean anything except the center, these two bars right here have to be centered with this. This can be anywhere in the center of the pendulum itself. It doesn't matter. In fact, we could actually put it way the hell out here or way over there. It doesn't matter. The thing is, it must be sent. This must be centered between the two push bars and centered this way with this axle. And that's why we use the all threaded rod with the nuts so that we can actually move it a little bit at a time. We get to a bigger pendulum using larger bars. We're going to take the nuts and drill them out. Use slick rod, drill these out and drill them and tap them for set screws. That way we can adjust it and have a solid bar instead of all threaded rod so it'll be stronger. Right now, the reason for this machine, like I said in an earlier video, is so that it's smaller so that we can adapt it and uh, get tweak everything out so that when we build the bigger machine, the bigger one outside right now weighs 512 pounds, the pendulum itself, and uh, we intend to bump that to uh, somewhere between 1,000 and 1,200 pounds, put uh, an escapement on it. The uh, power transfer bar at the top is designed wrong. We're going to totally redesign it. And uh, if anybody's interested, the uh, gear, I mean the uh, lever uh, uh, that we have on it is a compound lever. 
but we're going to design and build our own transverse multi-compound lever. If anybody's interested in that, when I build it, I'll make some short, short videos of that showing you uh, how we're doing it. And mainly, the most important thing is why we're doing it. It's unbelievable the reason why. It doesn't, it just plain would not enter the average person's mind why we would do that. But the, the reason for it is unbelievable. We drastically cut the size of it down in length and uh, we don't increase the power one bit, but we cut the size down and the cost of the material to build. It's more complicated to build, but it uses a much lighter material and gives us far more strength, not power, strength. Get that straight, okay? Please, thank you. All right, I just thought I'd make a short video and let y'all know what we're doing here and how we're going. And uh, the business for my company is, is growing drastically, so I haven't been able to work on this as much as I'd like. Uh, everybody have a great weekend. Today is uh, May the 10th, and it's uh, oh, oh, somewhere about uh, 5 p.m. in the afternoon. Everybody have a great weekend. What's left of it? Talk to you folks later. Bye-bye.